Hi there, welcome to Photography 101. Today we're going to look at aperture. That's sometimes called f-stop. And what it is is the opening in the lens. You can open the lens up, and let more light in, or you can stop down the lens and let less light in. One thing that's pretty funny about aperture, I don't know if it's funny, confusing to a lot of people, is that f16 is a small hole and f2 it's a big hole. So here's a list of apertures starting at 2.8. Obviously you can go larger, which is a smaller number, all the way up to 32. One thing I want you to realize, we talked about full stops in ISO sensitivity, that the number doubles every time. Well, it might not look like it, but the actual size of the opening doubles with aperture. So I've made a little graphic here for you. If this is 2.8, this is f4, half the surface area, all the way down to ISO 32. So you can see the number, the size of the hole jumps a pretty good amount after every um, stop. And that's either letting in twice as much or half as much light. The same as ISO worked, either doubled or cut in half. Aperture works the same way. Every full stop either lets in twice as much light or half as much light. So F8 lets in half as much light as F5.6 and twice as much light as F11. The reason this is important is because you need to know equivalencies. If I go from ISO 100 to 200 and I was at F8, that means I'm going to have to may possibly have to take my aperture to F11 if I don't change my shutter speed. So every setting you change on one side is going to have an effect on the other controls to get the equivalent exposure. Just remember, it's opposite of what you think. A small number is a big hole. A big number is a small hole. So let's look at some samples. So we're going to look at some images here and we're going to see what effect the aperture has creatively on the image. So you're forced a little bit to choose an aperture depending on how much light you have, how much time you have, and the sensitivity you have. So really, with all those settings, you have quite a bit of freedom to select your aperture. And a lot of the time, you're making your creative choices based on the aperture you want to shoot with. You'll adjust your shutter speed and your ISO to match. So aperture is really, the, in my opinion, the kind of the biggest kingpin in the th of the three. So you can see here we have, uh, if you look up at the left, you'll see the file name and the uh, shutter speed, f-stop, and the ISO, as well as the focal length this image was shot at. Just one thing to note here, we're going to talk about depth of field, but your focal length has a lot of impact on depth of field. So let's have a look. This one is shot at f6.3, so not super, uh, not a super big hole in the lens, or a small number. You can see the trees in focus and the background starts to go out of focus. Now this is shot at 300 millimeters. If this was shot wider, you'd have a lot more depth of field at 6.3. Let's look at this one. Okay, this is f2.8 at 105 millimeters, and we are close. This is a macro lens, so it, this subject is really close to the camera. This also affects depth of field. But a 2.8 and close to the camera, you can see how we have just a very small area right in here that is in focus and you can see how quickly that drops off so opening up the lens by picking a smaller aperture number gets you to that point point. and this also shot at 2.8 you can see we have not a whole lot of depth of field it's very very shallow this was the same macro lens as the last one here's one at f22 and you can see we've got sharpness from right here and the trees are not completely sharp. Well, maybe they are. They're pretty sharp. I think the effect has been to blur them a little bit later. 
but you can see we, we keep a lot of depth of field there. F11, 24 millimeters. Lots of stuff, sharp. F22, you can see we have rocks right here, sharp. Everything down here is also sharp. And if you've ever been to Horseshoe Bend, you can appreciate how much distance this is covering, because that is a huge area. Again, F22. I'm trying to get everything in focus, from the rocks clear out to the mountains. F16. Now you can see I opened up the lens a little bit as the sun went down. Need a little let a little more light in. Okay, F8. Didn't need to keep a whole bunch of depth of field in this image, but F8 still not bad. 36 millimeters and F16, and this is one of my favorite images. Okay, F22, everything's in focus, nice and sharp, and F11, same idea. So based on the light you've got, you may have to make some adjustments in your aperture. So basically, pick how much light you want and what you want to focus, and that's aperture. You've seen images with a nice shallow depth of field. That's where just a very little bit is in focus. Very nice for people pictures. It makes your subject really kind of pop out from the background. And then you've also seen really nice images with a huge deep depth of field. Enzel Adams shot generally with everything in focus. F64, which most cameras can't even go to these days. So that is a very small f-stop. So creative choice is up to you. Do you want to keep most of the scene in focus? Do you want to keep less? Somewhere in between, you get a pick. But there's also a physics reason for aperture. And that is a bigger hole. If you imagine trying to stuff light through something Obviously, if you have a bigger hole, you can get more light through it in the same amount of time as a smaller hole. I mean, that's the third thing we'll talk about is shutter speed. So if we open up the lens, picture it as a uh, valve. It's a light valve. The aperture can be big or small. It lets in light. So you have to select the aperture according to how much light you have, how much time you have, and the sensitivity of the camera. If you're shooting in the dark, you gotta open that lens up as big as it'll go and try and get some of that light to come into the camera. If you're shooting outside, sometimes you're gonna have to stop down depending on maybe you can't get your ISO low enough to shoot at f2.8. And there's a couple things we can do to get around some of these obstacles, which we'll talk about in a more advanced class.